Well, folks, I want you, if you would, tonight to take your Bible and turn with us. This evening to 2 Timothy, if you would, 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter number 4 tonight. And uh, had this thought that's been on our mind for a few days. 2 Timothy chapter number 4. And I want to read just a couple verses here tonight. 2 Timothy chapter number 4. And verse number 6, where Paul was writing to Timothy, he said, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love is appearing. Father, we thank you now for your word. I pray you'd use it tonight to speak to some hearts. And Lord, I pray that the Lord Jesus Christ would be exalted and lifted. And God, help us, Lord, that we would be able to say, as Paul said, I am now ready. And Lord, we know that there's many tonight that aren't ready, but I pray that you'd help us to be able to have that settled in our heart. We love you. Thank you for all you do for us in Jesus' name. Amen. I think about a verse of Scripture in John chapter number 9 and verse number 44, where it says, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. And as we look here tonight in 2 Timothy chapter number 4, I find it interesting where Paul, as he wrote this letter to young Timothy, he said, for I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. And I want to just preach for just a little bit tonight on I am now ready. I think about something that Spurgeon had said. He said, the time for pulling up the anchor, the time for letting loose the cable, and cutting from the mooring is at hand. I soon shall be, uh, I soon shall be loosed upon my voyage. And he, and he knew right well where that voyage would end, in the fair havens of the port of peace, in the better country, whether his Lord had gone before him. And you know, as we, as we think about these words that Paul said to Timothy, you think about it now, he said, I am now ready. You know, Paul could look back with calm satisfaction, and he could say, I am now ready. He can look forward with sweet assurance, and he can still say, I am now ready. He looked around with much interest on the mission that had engaged his life after he had gotten saved on the Damascus Road, and he could say that I am now ready. And I believe that the implication of this text is, is there's a time in his life. I mean, if you'll notice what he said, he said, I am what? I am now ready. And I believe that the implication could be that there was a time in his life where he was not ready. And really when we think about it tonight, we could all say that. There's a lot that we can say about it. You go, you go back tonight and we won't go back and look at all the verses, but I think about the stoning of Stephen in Acts chapter number 7 and verse number 8. And how that at that time in Paul's life, of course his name then was Saul, and we know that he was not ready to meet the Lord. In fact, the Bible said in Acts chapter number 7 and verse number 58, it said that they cast him out of the city and stoned him, and the witness laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul, and they stoned Stephen. We know as we think about at that time in Paul's life, 
life that he was full of religion like many people today. You try to talk to him about the Lord, witness to him, and share with him the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And many times when people say something like this, they'll say, no, just leave me alone. I've got my religion. You ever heard that before? You, you try to give them a gospel track. And, uh, and, and many times I'll, I'll, I'll try to give them a track and I'll ask them to read the, the, the track. So if you died right now, you know for uh, sure that you'd go to heaven. And, and many times people will say, well, nobody in this world can know that. But aren't you glad? I'm glad that we can know that. We, listen, we may not know much, but I'm glad there's one thing that we can know. We can know that we're saved by the grace of God. But there's many folk, you know, as you, as you talk to them about the Lord, try to witness to them, try to be a soul winner. We understand there's many people that have no relationship with Him whatsoever. And, and as we think about the Apostle Paul, we understand, he said here in this verse, he said, I am now ready. And I believe one of the implications is there was a time in his life where he was not ready because he was a Pharisee of the Pharisees and he may have had his religion, but there in Acts chapter number 7 and Acts chapter number 8, we understand that he had no relationship with the God of glory whatsoever. But there was something that happened on the Damascus Road. And uh, you might say, what was that? Well, uh, turn back for just a moment and we'll, we'll see this, uh, what, what happened in his life. Acts chapter number 9. The Bible said there in verse 3, said, And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he trembled and astonished, said, Lord, what would thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men which journeyed with, a, with him stood speechless, speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man, but they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he, was, and he was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. And there, and there was a certain disciple at Damascus uh, named Ananias. Uh, 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 and to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street, which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayeth. And he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and put in his hand on him and he might receive his sight. Then Ananias uh, answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he had done in the, to thy saints at Jerusalem. Uh, what was that evil? He, he persecuted. There was much persecution. And, and here he hath authority from the chief priest to, to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and and kings and the children of Israel, for I will I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and it entered, entered into the house and put his hands on him, said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, has sent me that thou mayest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received sight forthwith, forthwith and arose and was baptized and when he had received meat he was strengthened. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples which were at uh, Damascus. And, and of course as you read through this we understand that the Apostle Paul's life was changed on this Damascus road. Not only was he steeped in re, uh, uh, religion but thank God there was a relationship. But we also understand as we read this tonight uh, there in Second Timothy, chapter number four, he said, "For I am now what? I, I am now ready." Let me turn back here. He said, "I'm now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure." Is at hand. We we understand that he had a he had a there was a time in his life where he wasn't ready, but he got saved by the grace of God, and his life was changed. But we also understand that as Paul 
ministered and he went through life that he had a struggle in his flesh. How do we know that? Well, back in the book of Philippians chapter number 1 verse 21 it says this, For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor, yet what, yet what I shall choose I wot not. For I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart, and to be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for, new, uh, for you. This was no longer the case here in 2 Timothy chapter number 4. He was not, not, no longer in a strait between two. In fact, as we, you, you, you study the Apostle Paul's words, we reveal the strength of his declaration. At this moment that we're reading here in 2 Timothy chapter number 4, he said, I'm ready to be offered. Look, look, look what it said. He said, I'm ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. And, and so, what he's saying here, I'm ready to be poured out as a, uh, as a drink offering, so to speak. My life and my blood as a sacrifice to my Lord. And so we think of the many things that the Apostle Paul had gone through in his life, what transpired in his life. But, but, it, but it's amazing to me as I read these verses that he knew that the timing was perfect. He said here, in other words, he knew that he was getting ready to die. He knew that he was getting ready to cross over. He said, for I am now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. So, as we think about this, we, we, I, I want to give you tonight just three things tonight that suggest at this moment in the Apostle Paul's life that he was in a state of peace. And, and what a blessing it is when you come down to the end to be able to have that peace in your heart. And I, I believe that's the only way that the Apostle Paul could, 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 could suggest that or, or, or write that to Timothy. And uh, you might say, how could he say that? Well, three things I want to share with you tonight. First of all, I believe we recognize tonight that he had a clear conscience. He had a clear conscience. Uh, where, where do you see that? Well, he said, I'm, not, I'm, I'm ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. He said, I have fought a good fight, and I have finished my course. And what's the last phrase there in verse number 7? I have kept the faith. Uh, we, we recognize that he had a clear conscience. The days after his conversion, there on the Damascus Road, we find that as we read a while ago that uh, Ananias is comforted there, where it said in Acts chapter number 9 verse 15, by the Lord, but, but the Lord said unto him, go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel, for I will show him how great things he must suffer for my namesake. Uh, Paul, listen, Paul knew in his heart that he had given God his best. And I wonder tonight, could we say that? How else could he say that? He said, I have fought a good fight. And I don't believe that he was saying that to boast or to brag. I believe that God used him to inspire Timothy and to encourage young Timothy as a young preacher. He, listen, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course, and I have kept the faith. Uh, Paul knew in his heart that he'd give God his best. And I want to show you one more thing. Turn, turn back over to Acts chapter number 20. I, I love this passage of Scripture, Acts chapter number 20. We, we see his final testimony to the Ephesian elders. And I, I believe this is another evidence that he knew that he had given his best because in verse 26 he said, of Acts 20, he said, Wherefore I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood 
above all men. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. And he begins to challenge these Ephesian elders. And then that, if you look down at verse 35, said, I've showed you all things, how that so laboring you ought to support the weak. And remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And when he had thus spoken, he kneeled down and he prayed with them all. And they all wept sore and, and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him, sorrowing most of all for the words which he spoke, spoke, spake, that they should see his face no more. And they accompanied him into the ship. I, I believe that Paul do. You know, one of the ways that he was, you know, uh, he, he said there in verse number uh, six of Second Timothy chapter number four, he said, "For I am now ready." And I, I believe the implication is strong that there was a time in his life where he was not ready. He was not ready to meet God, and there was things that he struggled with that, that, that he was not ready in his walk with the Lord. And, and I believe tonight in our life, you know, the first thing that we need to be, get settled tonight is we need to be able to say, I, I'm ready to go. If it's my time to die, I'm ready to go. And, and listen, I want to say, that is the starting point. And I want to ask, are you ready tonight? We do not know, my, my friend, when it's our time to go, but I want to tell you, every one of us is going to die. Hello? The Bible said it's born unto man once to die after this judgment. We don't know when it's going to happen. But not only that, once we get that, that, that starting point nailed down and we know we're saved by the grace of God, I want to tell you, then becomes the, the, the real battle. As we walk with the Lord, as we strive to please Him and, and walk with Him and serve Him, I want to tell you, it's a battle. Amen? And, and so tonight it ought to be our desire to do what we can to, to, to be able to, to please the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and that is why I, I believe that Paul, he, he said, you know, I am now ready. He's ready. And he knew in his heart that he had given God his best. And, and he's laying out his final testimony to young Timothy. He did, I don't believe he knew the moment, the, the hour, the day, the, the very moment. But he knew, my friend, that death was getting ready to look in his window. And he was able to say, I am now ready. And, and of course, another validation of that is we looked over there in the book of Acts chapter number 20. He said he was pure from the blood of all men. I, and I want to ask you tonight, you know, as we, you, you listen, you might be, listen, you may be here tonight, you might be saved by the grace of God, but I want to ask you, are you ready? Are, are, are you ready? I, I mean, as we, as we think about our walk with him, are, are we, in other words, are we where we ought to be spiritually? That is what I'm trying to say. Are, are we, uh, are, are, listen, are we just uh, blowing air, so to speak? Are we who we really say we are? When we go at home at night and nobody's there but us and God, are we the individual, my friend, that we proclaim to be? Are we ready? I think about a lady by the name of Mary in Mark chapter number 14, another favorite story of mine. Where, remember, she took the alabaster box and she anointed our Savior. And there in Mark chapter number 14, where the religious leaders, they began to murmur and complain, said, Why was this waste of the ointment made? And they began to murmur and bellyache because literally that box of ointment was equivalent to a year's earning. And Jesus said, Let her alone, why trouble ye her? She hath wrought a good work on me. She hath done what she could. I want to tell you, I wonder tonight, have we, as God's people, have we done what we could? I think in, in, in Luke 17, 33, the Bible says, Whosoever shall not seek this, whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. So we come tonight to 2 Timothy chapter number 4, and we find that I believe that, that the Apostle Paul had this peace in his heart because we recognize, number one, that he had a clear conscience. And he was able to say, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand, Timothy. I have fought a good fight. I finished my course. I've kept the faith. He, listen, we recognize, number one, he had a clear conscience, but I want to say, number two, we recognize a completed course. A completed course. Isn't that what it says there in verse number seven? He said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished. 
what, 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 I have finished, what, what's that next word? That's a pronoun, isn't it? That's a personal, I have finished, not somebody, listen, your course may not be my course. My course may not be your course, but I want to tell you, there's a course for every one of us. And what he said, I, I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course. We recognize. I believe that he could say, I am now ready. Why? Because he had the peace of, of my friend of, of, of having a course that was completed. When I think about that, a couple things about Paul's choice of words that I find interested. We, we find a night where he said, I have finished my course. What, what, what does it mean? It means to complete. It means to execute. It has the idea to conclude, to discharge a debt, to accomplish or to bring to an end, but not merely to end it, but to bring into perfection or to its destined goal so as to carry it through. And I believe, listen, what joy it is, my friend, for the Apostle Paul to be able to carry through what God had him to do. Listen, he was a religious leader. He murdered people. He killed people. But he got saved by the grace of God. But that was not, listen, God didn't save him to sit. God saved him to serve. And he got busy. And he proclaimed the gospel. God used him in a mighty way. And that's why when he got down to the end of, the, end of his journey, my friend, he could have that peace in his heart. He could, have, he, he could have that peace. He could say, I'm now ready. He had a clear conscience. But I want to tell you, he had a, 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 a he, listen, he, he said, I, I finished my course. And, and by the way, let me just say this night, folk. Paul didn't determine the course. Paul, Paul didn't just wake up one day and say, I'm going to do this. No, Listen, Paul did not determine the course. God did. And, and three things I want to give you about that course tonight. Number one, as I read this, and I believe it's very clear, we understand that Paul was faithful to the course that God gave him. But then there's something else about it. Uh, when, when I think about that course that he was on, he didn't mope. But I believe Paul ran the race, and he didn't stop. Can I say tonight there's no room for quitters in God's army? There, listen, I, we, we, folks, we don't have time to stop. And I listen, I know if we'd all be honest, there's times where we get weary and times where we get tired and so forth. But I want to tell you, we need to press on. I, I, listen, I believe that, listen, I believe time, uh, listen, I don't know when the Lord Jesus is coming, but I believe it's soon and very soon. What, what, what did the Bible say in the book of Hebrews, chapter 12? Wherefore, seeing we're compassed about with so great a crowd of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Listen, Paul didn't determine this course, but he said, I finished it. God determined it. Paul was faithful to it, and Paul ran the race. But then I, I want to give you something very important to think about, and I'm about done, but I want to just say this tonight. Paul stayed within the boundaries. You might say, preacher, what in the world are you talking about? He stayed within the boundaries of running this race. That is why he could say when he got down to the end, I am now ready to be offered. He, listen, in other words, he did not do something, my friend, to disqualify him. That, listen, I'll say there are many preachers down through the years I've known that have been disqualified. And, and, and many, uh, many people in the house of God, many, many, many uh, deacons disqualified themselves. And then sometime when they get disqualified, then they'll go yoke up with another group of people and then they'll, they'll change what they used to preach against. Right. I, I believe it's very, listen folk, I believe it's very clear as you read there in God's Word, that, that, that a bishop is to be the husband of one wife. And I don't believe it's talking about one at a time either. Uh, um, and then when something happens, then what happens is they, they blame it on somebody, and then they'll go, y'all know what I'm talking about. 
But, 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 but my point tonight is this, is, is that Paul said, I, listen, I am now ready. And he could say that. He had, he had that peace because he completed the course. He stayed within the boundaries. He did not disqualify himself. And I want to say, folks, listen, we, we, we got to be careful. Behind every bush, under a car, listen, young people at school, there, there's somebody out there trying, going to do what they can to try to wreck and ruin your testimony. But you make up your mind that it's not going to happen to you. Hello? We, we, listen, we live in a generation where there, there are many statistics, and every one of us see many people that have fell through the cracks for the wayside. Listen, Paul, listen, by the way, Paul used the same word course as Christ did when, when he said from the cross in John 19 30. It is finished. And he bowed his head and he gave up the ghost. Listen, Paul was satisfied with his course. Can I ask you a question tonight? Are you satisfied with the course that you're on? Paul was satisfied with this course. And, 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 and I, I believe the Lord was satisfied. You know, I think about this verse, Acts 20, 24. When I think about this verse, Shelby and Steve, I often think of Susan. Every time I read this verse, I think about it. And I remember one of the last times I seen her down there in Winston-Salem. I remember her quoting this verse. Acts 20, 24, but none of these things move me. Neither count of my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my, what? Course. Not with dread. Not with a hung head. But with joy. So we, we, we see tonight that Paul said, I am now ready. We understand tonight that he could say that and he had a clear conscience. And not only that, we recognize that he had a completed course. But then the third thing I want to give you, the last thing real quick tonight. We recognize a chosen comrade. A chosen comrade. Can I ask you another question? I know what you, you know what the answer to this. Paul's letter is addressed to who? To Timothy. A chosen comrade. In other words, Paul's desire was that Timothy would pick up where Paul left off. Paul had invested his life in the lives of men. One whose name was Timothy. The Bible said in Philippians chapter number 2 verse 19 through 22 it says this, But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timoth Timotheus shortly unto you that I also may be of good comfort when I know your state, for I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state. For all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ, but ye know the proof of him that as a son with a father he has served with me in the, in the gospel. So tonight as we think about this, we need to understand that night is approaching. And I'm not just literally talking, I know it's getting dark outside. In fact, I told my wife tonight I wanted to see what it looked like at night when the lights when it got dark because they put a new light out here at the front of the church. But what I'm saying, night is approaching, and our opportunity to labor and witness and to be who God would want us to be will soon end. Our race will conclude. Our time to be with Jesus. And, and, and listen, I want to ask you this tonight before we pray. When our time comes, do you feel like you'll be caught in a surprise? Or will you be able to say like Paul said in verse number 6, For I am now ready. I hope and pray tonight that we'll be able to leave this place and say by the grace of God, I'm ready. Amen. Father, we ask you tonight that you would help us to have that peace and that confidence that the Apostle Paul did. 
He had a clear conscience. He had a comrade. He had a completed course. Lord, I pray that you would help us, Lord, to be in a manner as, as that, that as we go through our life that we'd be who you'd want us to be. I pray, Lord, as we leave this place tonight, may you give each one safety as they go home. Bring us back at the next point in time. We love you and we thank you now for all you do. In Jesus' name, amen.